to Cafecito with Rosie on TV. My name is Rosie Paulson and I am your host. I am a commissioner, a public speaker, a Medicare insurance broker, and in 2020, I published a book called Nieke, The Mindset to Get What You Want. My brand promise is knowledge, connection, success. And the whole premises of the show is to invite my friends, the professionals in the Tampa Bay area, so you, my viewers, can get to know who they are, what they do, and how they change in the community. And today, I'm thrilled and honored to introduce you to another Latina friend of mine. Her name is Ana Dominguez the Show. Hello, Ana. How are you? Hello, Rosie. Good. And you? Fine, fine. Thank you very much for being here. It is thrilling to me to showcase my friends and what they're doing in the community. So one of the first things I like to do with people that come to my show is just find out about the person. Who are you? Where you come from originally? Are you married? You have children? Who is Ana Dominguez the show? Okay, well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Mm -hmm. I am also very thrilled. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I am a child of God, mm -hmm. so I want to start with saying that. And second, and well, third, <laughs> third, third thing fourth thing <laughs> is and I, I am originally from Mexico. Uh -huh. So I'm from Mexico City. Okay. I've been living in Tampa for almost two years. Mm -hmm. I have a two year old, okay. so I'm a new mama oh. and I'm enjoying motherhood like you have no idea. Mm -hmm. And well, my family is in Mexico currently, and I only have my mom here temporarily mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. me, and I'm enjoying her the most I can. Right. But well, that's who I am. Yeah, so what Tampa or what the Tampa Bay area? I know you live in Tampa Springs, but why out of everywhere in the United States you selected the Tampa Bay area? Oh, well, that was a personal, very personal decision. I was living in Texas. Mm -hmm. I was not uh, aware of the importance of being close to family. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, but until mm -hmm. I had my kid, mm -hmm. that's when I realized, like, I really needed to be closer to family. So... One of my best friends had just moved here, mm -hmm. and all the, the life that we had in Texas was over, our job was over, and everything was just ending, thank mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. and that's when I took the opportunity, and I was like, I need to move to Florida, I need mm -hmm. to move to Tampa, I want to be close to family, so I can have somebody I can rely on on in mm -hmm. case I needed something with my kid. Right. So your son was born in Texas or was he born here? In, in Texas. Yes. Yeah. He's oh. Texan. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have my, my son, Stephen, is 26 years old, but there's always that bond between a mother and a son. It's just like, so enjoy him. You know, they drive you a little crazy because <laughs> little boys get into everything. At least mine did. Um, but it's just amazing because they will be your best friends forever and your protector. Know. You know, as you know, my son is so big, but he's always protecting me, and he's mm. always gonna be my little my little boy. You know, no yeah. matter how big he gets, and yes. even if he has kids. But yeah, it's always amazing. So tell me now uh, about your professional and what do you do right now your profession and what do you do right now in the Tampa Bay area well professionally I am a financial professional with New York Life mm -hmm. so I do all the financial protection financial accumulation I help people working you know on their budgets mm -hmm. I help them plan their you know either retirement or emergency funds or mm -hmm. anything that is related to financial planning and I I also teach kids mm -hmm. how to you know save money because I think it's very important mm -hmm. I found out that only New Zealand is the only country who that has really like a financial program in their school. So yeah. that's very sad. Yeah. Now Australia is starting to do it, but we really need to teach our kids yeah. how to handle and manage money. Yeah, so, we teach yeah. them how to spend the money here in the United States, unfortunately, but we don't <laughs> teach them how to save the money. And yeah, that was something in the curriculum that used to be here before and they have removed it. So that's a wonderful job to start. I. I always hear the story that my daughter Tabitha one time she, she came running to me and said, Mom, Mom, my friend told me about, you know, I have this checkbook and, and you subtract the money you have in the bank plus whatever you have spent. And I'm like thinking, oh my God, I fell as a mother because I do my budget so well. 
but I had not, I had failed to teach my children. Mm -hmm. And from that day, I started teaching them. And both of them are very savvy. They don't, that doesn't mean they save a lot or they <laughs> they keep their money, but they have very clear idea of what their finances are. Um, so tell me also for your prior life when you were in, in Mexico, you own, a, you own some businesses. So tell me a little yes. bit about that. So I started a language school and translation agency. Okay. Uh, the name was Babel. Uh -huh. And uh, I started it in 2009. And then I came to the U.S. when I got married in 2014. Uh -huh. So I still had the chance to keep the business because my mom and some, yeah, my mom mm -hmm. was helping me like mm -hmm. to keep it. But when I have my kid, then I was like, okay, I have a job here, and then the school in Mexico, and then a baby. So I just felt that I had to quit something. Mm -hmm. So it was in 2018 when I decided to close the school. Sadly, but I mean, I had my son, so right. he was my priority. Right. Anyway, so, yeah, but we kept that business for almost 10 years. Yeah, and that's amazing. And I think. That's one of the things as a business owner that is very important for many of us to understand. You need to work on your priorities. What's the most important thing? Why do you want to have that financial stability? Uh, why do you want to have that financial free freedom? I say your family, but if it's your family, you have to put the priorities first, you know? Because like we talk about our children, they grow up so fast. And sometimes if you put your business ahead of your children, by the time that they grow up and they leave, they're resentful about what you do. So exactly. it's important. And I'm glad you did that because it, you, you go, it's nothing is going to reward you as seeing your son grow up to be the young man he's going to, he's called to be, you know, his Absolutely. purpose. Absolutely. Yeah. And that you have influence on it because you can help him to be the best that he can be. So that's amazing. And uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, ways that New York Life supports you and supports you in your business. If somebody is considering a career in the financial services, what would be a couple of the tips that you will share with them as a person that has been doing this for a little bit? Like what would be the one thing that people need to think about? Well, if you wanted to start a career in this industry, I could, uh, if you want to do it with a company, mm -hmm. I could really definitely make a research of the uh, stability, financial stability of the companies. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are thinking about your money, you're thinking about investments, protection, mm -hmm. or financial protection, you need to make sure that you are doing it with a company that, for example, New York Life has been in business for 175 years. Mm -hmm. So they already survived, what, two pandemics mm -hmm. now, uh, one recession and one 9-11. Mm -hmm. So you want to consider that because you, like in my case, I don't want to recommend something for someone that I couldn't do for my own family. Right. So right. to me, that is very important. Yeah. That would be like the most important. And I think let's talk about your children because, again, I think that's an opportunity that a lot of Hispanics don't understand. We worry so much about the, the financial of being able to send our children to college, and not only for Hispanics, but any, any parent. But you can start a fund for your child when they, you know, with not too much money, but that will set them up for future. What would be uh, one of those recommendations? Like, where do they start if they have a child or a grandchild? for that matter. You mean like a financial protection? No, well, not only financial protection, but a savings plan perhaps for a child. Oh, okay. Or, we, or for education purposes too. They have those things, yes, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We have, we have that solution. We mm -hmm. offer one of those solutions that uh, since they are very young, you can start, you know, a plan like that, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of time to make that money grow. Because, for example, my kid, he is two years old, so I started when he was born, mm -hmm. right? So I had 18 years. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I know 16, mm -hmm. right? But I have uh, I had 18 years to make that money grow, plus the protection that I'm giving him. That it does not matter what happens, mm -hmm. he will be protected for right. the rest of his life. Plus, he'll have that account. No matter what, he can use it, you know, for school, 
But if he does not want to study college, mm -hmm. you know, maybe he just wants to start a business mm -hmm. or maybe he, I don't know what he's going to do. So at least he has that money available to start with something. Yeah, because of the time. The time is what will make it grow. Exactly. And that's important. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the pandemic and pivoting into something new, right? I know that you started uh a business, not a business, a networking group called Babel Networking that started by being, you know, face to face. But then the next month we were all sent home <laughs> and now everybody is in there and we can't talk to each other. So why don't you tell me a little bit about Babel? How did this start and how has it come along and evolved into what it is now? Sure. Well, uh, Babel Networking is uh, something I'm very proud of. Uh, we started that uh, group, networking group, uh, because we found, my friend and I, we from from Mexico too, and we want to start a business, but we did not know anybody, and we started going to networking meetings, and we found that we were just living with a bunch of business cards, and we were not really connecting with nobody, and we were trying to call them, you know, mm -hmm. later, like, hey, do you remember? No, who are you? I don't know. I don't want to buy anything. Shit. So I was like, oh, I'm not connecting with nobody. Mm -hmm. So we decided to start our own networking group. Of course, like you said, we met in person like three times maybe, mm -hmm. and then we were sent home. Yeah. And then, well, a lot of businesses were closed, but we were still meeting, just uh -huh. were encouraging, uh -huh. and, and that's it, you know? And then in August, when all the business started, you know, like uh, getting like running again, then we started the business meetings, but mm -hmm. we realized that virtually mm -hmm. we could go to some other states. Okay. So there are professions now that you can do, or you can do business pretty much everywhere mm -hmm. in the country. And we have grown so much right. and we are dedicated to building relationships. That's, that's the main thing. So where can people find you in, uh, for Babel Networking? What's their... Uh, well, we are on Facebook, mm -hmm. we are on LinkedIn, we are <laughs> everywhere, Instagram, we yeah. have also a website, and we pretty much always uh, post all the events mm -hmm. on Eventbrite, so mm -hmm. you can find them too there. Mm -hmm. So everybody is welcome to join to our meetings, mm -hmm. and we are supporting, as long as it's legal, I always <laughs> say we're going to be there supporting your, your dream. And awesome. So let's talk about the last thing is usually what I ask people that come to the show is that if you have a tip of something that you can share with your younger self from, you know, going back, what would be the one thing that you tell your younger self to not worry about, not do perhaps now, knowing what you know now? Oh, wow. Well, that could be stop trying to please everybody <laughs> and just concentrate on what God has for you and the relationship that we have with God and stop pleasing everybody else around you. It doesn't matter who that is. Awesome. Well, Anna, thank you so much for being here this afternoon. We really, really do appreciate it. Afternoon, night, you know, whenever you look at this show. But my friends, like Anna said, the most important thing is for you to know who you are. And as a business owner, you know, if you are a Christian, why not come and say that that is the first, because you are a child of God. Perhaps God sent you into the marketplace to leave that purpose. And by you trying to please everybody, your pain tribe is not looking, for, is not finding you. And they want to really find you, like you, trust you, and do business with you. So I want to encourage you to continue to be pure, positive, and inspired. This is Rosie Paulson, and you have watched Cafecito with Rosie on TV. Ciao!